I'm going to try something different this week with the wood chipper series. Instead of having the vlogging during the actual build of the wood chipper, you know, having it all intermingled, I'm going to try to do the build really quick in one video, maybe a little extra talking. And then I'm going to have an extra video that is me vlogging, you know, talking and rambling a whole lot. So I think I might go over a little better having two videos. That way you can watch the build, and then if you feel like it, I can yak at you for a while. So let me know if you like having this broke up into two videos, or if you prefer them all just mashed into one and intermingled as we go. I hit a good drift. Last front tire. No longer see the front axle tractor. Good boy. Alright, I'll get out of here. I really want to say thank you to everybody who sent me stuff over the holiday season there. I got wonderful cards. I got um, a couple presents mailed to me. Um, I was going to actually mention everybody that sent me stuff and do a personal one-on-one -on -one thank you on camera. And I decided I probably should not do that. Um, so I'm just going to say thank you to all the people that sent me stuff. I was just blown away this year when stuff kept showing up in the mail. Um, absolutely awesome. I'm a little bit of a sentimental person and gifts are something I treasure a lot. Um, just the idea behind it, you know, I, I really respect that and really treasure the idea that somebody sent me something. Um, yes, thank you to everybody who sent me cards and gifts and little notes and even emails and stuff that everybody sent me. It was just awesome. And I don't know what's silly about that other than thank you everyone. You know who you are. If you sent me something, I am thanking you personally right now. Well, it's Sunday. It's my day to work on the wood chipper. Finally, again, um, I feel like a broken record lately. I just keep saying, man, I don't have the time to work on the wood chipper. And I don't have the time to work on the wood chipper. It's amazing how life gets so busy sometimes, you know. Crazy. Uh, but two weeks ago, I got sick with the flu, and it was a nasty, nasty bug. Um, as my neighbor who got it said about it, he's like, uh, it was one of those bugs that you wished you could die, but you knew you'd have to get better to die. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly how I feel about it. It was miserable. Anyway, I'm not going to talk about that because. I don't even want to think about it. And then last weekend, I honestly don't remember what I was doing, but I had a lot going on. We've had this really unusual warm weather week, actually this last week. Uh, it's been up into the 50s for temperature, you know, 55 Fahrenheit. Um, just crazy warm for January. And because of that, um, a lot of my customers are wanting to get stuff done with that warm weather. So I have been super busy doing on-site work, um, which is awesome. I, you know, can't complain about being busy, but, um, but on the other hand, it's been almost overwhelming. I think the next few days are going to be really slow, though, because... We are supposed to get a heck of a snowstorm. Actually, I think it's going to roll in tonight, according to the predictions. We're talking 40 mile an hour winds, and some predictions have us for 18 inches of snow with that. Which, if that's the case, those are going to be some really, really huge drifts. And, you know, that's going to be completely whiteout conditions. So, uh, yeah, I have a feeling in the next few days I'm going to be kind of bored which I'm actually okay with too. Uh, my point of telling you all that is uh, I actually need to get several things done today just in case we actually do get that snowstorm. The generator I use 
uh, you know, for when the grid goes down, we don't have electricity, it's not running right. I got it out, I don't remember when now, a couple months ago maybe. Uh, thought I had it all running good. And I actually used it yesterday to power my plasma cutter real quick, just to give it some exercise. And it will not pull a load, so I'm guessing the carburetor is varnished from that old crappy gas that's been in there for several years. So I need to tear that thing down, tear the carburetor out of it, clean it up, and hopefully that'll take care of it. It runs beautiful at idle. It runs decent at a light load, but as soon as you put a heavy load on it, it just dies. So, you know, I'm guessing one of the jets is uh, clogged up with that varnish or whatever you want to call it from gasoline. Um, I haven't used this generator in a couple years now at this point. Um, well, every once in a while I get it out and play with it a little bit, but that gas is at least two years old that's in it. So I got to do that this afternoon just to be prepared. Um, I probably wouldn't mess with it. I'd probably just uh, hook up to my generator I got on my welding truck. But the belt that powers my generator broke. And I went to town and bought one. And when I got home, it is the wrong size. It is too short. Can't get it on there at all. And being Sunday, I can't go back to town and get another one. Not to mention it's 35 miles one way. So, yeah, I need to get this other generator going just in case. Um, so, yeah, I kind of feel like I need to play with that today instead of the wood chipper. Uh, also, I need to go feed cows. Um... I think I'm going to feed them twice as much as I normally do, and just in case I cannot feed them tomorrow. That little Kubota tractor gets around really, really well with that front wheel assist and everything, but it doesn't do you any good if you can't see where you're going, because I'm thinking if it really is 40 mile an hour winds and snowing that I won't even be able to see where I'm going, so it won't matter if I can get anywhere because I won't be able to see where I'm going. So I think I'm going to feed them double today which will take me quite a while. Um, and also, I think I'm going to go ahead and go out and cut some firewood. So, as much as I really want to work on the wood chipper right now, I feel like I can't do it right now. Which sucks. Um, so, yeah. I had a few other thoughts I was going to share with the camera real quick before we got going. Uh, while I was doing some work yesterday, and I should have grabbed my cell phone and took some voice notes or voice to text notes or done something because I can't remember a single one of them now. Um, also, I've been thinking about it a lot, and as soon as I get this wood chipper done, <laughs> which seems to be dragging on forever, I never dreamed I'd be still working on this wood chipper. I really, my goal was to have it done by Christmas, and well, it's a month after Christmas now, so, yeah, ah, not even, yeah, yeah, whatever, um, so anyway, when I get this wood chipper done, <laughs> when, um, I'm going to go back to Trebuchet Tuesday, because I have finally made up my mind I'm going to build the next size up Trebuchet, I was thinking I could probably just go for the big one that'll fling a car next, but I had this crazy idea, I don't even know when, it just hit me one time, that I would love to put a hydraulic cylinder on the arm to fling it instead of using counterweights. I'll probably have some counterweight on it, but it'll rely mostly on the hydraulics. And I don't want to build a huge one to try it, and I don't want to retrofit the trebuchet I already built to do it. I think I want to build one from scratch that's actually designed around the hydraulic system. So I want to do that next as soon as I get the wood chipper done. It'll be slightly larger than the trebuchet I built and I think it's going to be awesome. I'm excited to get back to that. Um, like I said, I just I don't feel like I'm ready to build the big one that's going to fling a car. Um, oh, speaking of cars, that's something else I was going to talk about, was the price of scrap metal has dropped to nothing. It is ridiculous. You know what they pay you 
for it when you take it in. Um, I've got this huge pile out there and I was going to take it in last week and I called them up and I said, what is the price of scrap iron? I heard it dropped. Um, it was over 200 a ton. Was, I think I got like $210 a ton the last load I took in, which was back in the spring, I think. So, I mean, that's quite a while ago and I heard it dropped. And so I said, you know, I've got several thousand pounds out here. You know, what's the price? And he said, $30 a ton. And I was like, did I hear you right? And he said, yeah, you heard me right. $30 a ton for scrap iron. It went from $210 to $30. I'm like, that is not even worth me taking it in. That's just, you know, the time it takes me to load that onto my truck and drive the 40 miles one way to the scrap yard and unload it. I'm like, I cannot justify that. But anyway, I am going to go take care of my other chores and I look back this evening and I don't know, maybe I'll uh, show you tearing apart this generator and fixing the carburetor on it, see if that gets it. That'll be kind of interesting, I think. We'll see, might be a stupid video. So I'm going to stop yakking and we'll get to it. Oh yeah, I forgot. Um, another video I'm working on, several videos. You all have been asking for this. I'm very, very excited to tell you that my grandpa, who is 101 years old, has agreed to do an interview on camera. I have been after him for a very long time to do this. Um, so I have started filming some of it. Um, we've kind of been doing some pre-interview prep. I've been kind of going over questions, trying to take notes, trying to figure out what to do. I think I'm about ready to the point now to sit down, set up a couple cameras, and start talking to them. So I am very, very excited about that. I really want to get on that. Um, with this bad weather coming in, maybe I can do that here in the next couple days. I'm hoping. Oh yeah, and I took off my safety glasses just now, but I think it's okay to take them off to talk to the camera. I was pondering some of the comments on Outside Screwballs, Let Your Rant Out. And uh, there were some comments about how people hate it when metalworking channels suddenly start cooking something. <clears throat> and I've been thinking about it ever since then, which I mean, it's only been a few days now. But I'm fascinated by the idea that there are so many machinists who also really enjoy cooking. There's something there about a personality trait or something. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just that idea of precision and, you know, timing and all of that thing. I don't know, but I enjoy cooking as well. So, very interesting. I don't know. Food for thought. Something that uh, I've also noticed with being so busy is I haven't been able to spend enough time on my videos like I really want. I haven't been able to do, uh, you know, me arguing with myself or anything like that. I'm very disappointed in that. I need to spend more time making my videos good instead of just filming stuff. So, yeah, hopefully here pretty soon I can argue with myself sometime. Way to turn the carburetor to get these connecting rods off of here. Ooh. There we go. Carburetor is free. And there's a lot of dirt down there I gotta blow out. I like using this pan to clean carburetors in. I think it's the pan, the catch pan for a broiler. 
on an oven, but I could be wrong. I've had this pan for so long, I don't, honestly don't remember where I got it. But it's nice for little work like this. Oh, yeah, right. Those two. I don't know if I can get into that one though. Uh. Ah, got him. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. You can see there's some stuff down there in the bottom of the bowl. Um, can't see down the jet though. In any of those orifices, so I'll have to look at them a little bit more in detail, but choke works good. We'll probably go ahead and take that float off and make sure that's not plugged. I don't think it's plugged because there's gas in there. But you never know. It might be restricting it a little bit. I should have ran this generator before I uh, started tearing this down for the camera so you guys could hear what it was doing. Because now you won't believe me if I f tell you I have it fixed. Those orifices might be plugged. Little tiny things. So grab my cleaner and clean them out. That is clean. Maybe. It's really not going out though, is it? A little bit. That might be plugged. <sighs> well, I should probably put on my dang gloves for this, shouldn't I? Where are your gloves? Uh, oh. Hey, I can see through that orifice now. That one was definitely plugged. I think there's something going on in here, though. Grab the air nozzle and blow that out. Oh, oh man, yeah. That thing was plugged up. I always forget my lexicon. Oh, that's a huge difference. That might be good, actually. You can see it on my thumb there. That one's working good. All right, now I'm going to magically put this all back together. Um. As it says in all the service manuals, reverse procedure to reassemble. Hmm. Okay. If I find anything interesting along the way, I'll turn the camera back on. Hmm. It's all fun games until you drop a dang gasket. Uh, can I grab it with the claw? The claw. Ooh, the claw. Ah, I win. Oh, that's cool. I got a lumpy thing there, so you can't put it on backwards. I was looking at the uh, pattern in the dirt wire pattern, whatever you can call it, see what way it went, but don't have to do that because you can't put it on backwards anyway. It's very nice of them.
as you can tell, that was hot. <laughs> That's a pretty good little welder for what it is. It's my grandpa's welder. I don't use it very often. I did use it for several months here a couple years ago. Well, actually been about four years ago now. Um, when my Willie's flathead Jeep Hobart welder quit on me. Oh, I loved that welder. That thing was amazing. But, uh, yeah, it quit on me. And Long story short, I brought Grandpa's welder, that one right there, for a few months until I found myself the Lincoln diesel welder that I have mounted on my truck right now. It did all right. The amount of snow we're getting today isn't really all that much, but I um, thought I'd show you this for today. High around 30, which it's 29 right now, according to my thermometer. Winds north-northwest at 35 to 50 mile an hour. One to three inches of snow expected. Winds could occasionally gust over 60. So, it's the winds that are causing the problems today. I think we got about six inches of snow on the ground right now. Uh, it's hard to tell though with that wind, but yeah, it's just, it's just the wind that's causing whiteout conditions. If it was just snowing, it would not be a problem at all. I was jamming out to the radio, feeding cows, and station went off the air. They said uh, right before they went off the air, actually that uh, electric companies around here were reporting galloping power lines and poles were breaking. So expect power outages. Apparently we still have power here on the farm, but don't know for how much longer. So I guess I'll uh, go feed cows. Well, it doesn't look bad sitting here. But visibility is still really, really poor. Hi, kitty. You're going to try to come in, aren't you, while I'm doing this? Just for reference, there's the same view as yesterday. I can see a lot further now. What a morning. So let me know if you like having this broke up into two videos, or if you prefer them all just mashed into one and intermingled as we go.